Thought? It's always good to lead with flattery. Now give me the real thing. <laughs> with all due respect, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Dude, softball, man. Pop. It's a great question. I lo- it's a good question, and uh, many of us lose sleep trying to understand that. So what the, the way to think it through and the way it's being thought through in certain areas is what's the pre-development hydrologic condition of a system? X amount of rain, what was the condition, the vegetation, how did it, what's called the runoff coefficient? during X storm event with X saturation, how much was converted to surface water versus groundwater? What's the residence time of a raindrop from ridgeline to river mouth? How fast did it move, right? So so we try to set that up. You can't find a watershed that has that intact basically anymore, but you try to figure that out. Then you modify it, pave it, road it, cow it, vineyard it, log it, do whatever we do to it. And you're going to get a different thing. And that's that hydrograph I was talking about. So we're currently dealing with a system where you should have gotten, and what you're now having to do, which is why the stormwater permits are in, if you want to put an impervious surface and you're now clear that you've paved it over, you're now stealing the water from the creek by dumping it in the river in January when it should be going in the ground and coming out in October. So when we're talking about swales, what I think what we're, or water spreading types of structures, what, I, what my understanding and the, or the philosophy, that, that, and it's not just me, that the, a, a bunch of people are articulating this idea are coming at, is we're trying actually to remedy the current state of dehydration through imperviousness to get us back to a more retentive landscape with respect to the residence time of the flow. So we're trying to actually restore, we want that hydrograph, instead of going up and down, we want it to go like this. We're trying to ameliorate or attenuate the hydrograph is the technical term. So if you're going to put a rainwater tank off the gutter, is this tank stealing water? You should, you, if you, you should say that the roof is stealing the water. If the, if the roof goes to here and this goes straight out to the river, then the roof stole the water from the creek later in the year because you ran it down there and flooded your neighbors out in January. So it's interesting to me that what brings it up that we all of a sudden start getting worried about taking water is when we want to store the water. And I'm like, no, no. If, if we're going to have this discussion, then I want to start back at the source, which is let's recycle. So is this stealing it? And then the question is, this storage is offsetting what demand from what other place that would have been taken at what time of year and pumped. And so we begin to get into It's a complicated question and a really fun one. And, and lifeboat by lifeboat is going to have to figure out what's the optimum storage and retention of landscapes to balance environmental water needs with human water needs in such a way that works. And I don't have an answer for you, but I think it's, it's the work of a water budget, which legally we should be required. You know, we don't need any more unfunded mandates in this world. I'd love, we need to pass legislation and fund the legislation through bond measures to set up a in-stream upland water monitoring water budgeting process, basin by basin, that gets at a process that pre-adjudicates it before you really have to call the judge in and truly adjudicate it, which nobody where I come from wants to do. You had a thought? Yeah, would it make more sense rather than having uh, a county water district to uh, control all the water, say, and pump it to a bunch of hard packed sterile environments at once to have people catch storm water like this and then There, there are areas where that may make more sense. and that, So you described a whole bunch of tools in the toolbox of how to augment supply and decrease demand, and, and they all sound good. I, so I, I'm just supporting you with a bunch of tools. And then place by place, city by city, county by county, rural setting by rural setting, you're going to have to figure out which tools make sense to apply in what manner based on your geology and your rainfall re- regime and your length of season, and right? I'm not, I'm not punting on the question, but the, the answer is it depends, maybe, right? But what, what does is interesting 
is here's Portland, uh, 35 inches of rain spread out over six months, so the tank keeps getting topped off, smaller tank. This is a tank for four people, a family of four for five years, and the guy who put it in is an MD, and he has a carbon filter with UV light on the downstream side, and that's 100% of the potable water for his family for five years when I showed up to take the photo. Ole Erson, you can find this system on the web. Now in Sonoma County, much more Mediterranean, like you guys, shorter season but bigger volume, you need a bigger piggy bank because you got a lot coming in a short period of time. So this is 27,000 gallons of ferro cement, all off of this roof again, right? We're not taking it, it does not come from anywhere else. This, you created the impervious surface, and all this is doing is trying to balance a net zero and actually take responsibility for the impervious surface that you put up to begin with, is the positive flip that I'm trying to support you in seeing. And then you supply the water back. And in this case, they also get 100% of all their electricity off the roof with a grid intertie photovoltaic system. And all of their hot water is solar based off the roof as well. So the, the embodied energy and the greenhouse gas emissions and the natural gas thing and all of that, their roof is stacking a ton of functions. Brazil, this is a hand done ferro cement tank, but I love the way they paint on them at these permaculture sites. This one has a pre-filter. Water goes in here, fills up, and then if it's plugged off, it'll fill up in all the leaves and junk, and then the ball floats up and plugs it, and then the water can go in there. So it's a simple little pre-filter to keep the leaves out of your tank. Then you have post-filtration and disinfection as needed. Same thing, little pre-filter, super simple. There's lots of models and ways to do that, simple stuff. Here's an LA, tree people again. They did a model home. And they have these steel tanks that are acting also as a fence. They have a little pre-filter kind of a dude as well in there um, in an urban setting. If you're in an urban setting and you got a big pipe and your water is artificially subsidized because we the people built you a state water project and funded it and we're not paying for the impact of that watershed that's now underwater and the fish that can't get there anymore because that's not in the cost of your water. So it's pretty cheap, the water, really. Then these water systems where you've got to pay for the tank, put in the $200 double backflow prevention so you don't have cross-connection and contamination of the municipal supply, which is important, right? And the 100 bucks a year to have somebody come and monitor that system. It gets pretty hard to do the math and make the economics work in some settings. So, so we're going to need better budgeting to really honor this. But in rural areas where I come from, where my well's 185 feet down and it pumps less than a gallon a minute, and sometimes goes dry, then you can't beat the price of having it. And it's better quality water. Um, this is a school in Lagunitas in Marin County, Salmon Protection and Watershed Network, Spawn. And so they, we work this system out. It's this little pavilion. They fill up 30,000 gallons and then irrigate their organic vegetable garden on the school campus out of that. And they're taking no water out in the summer, keeping it in for the fish and offsetting the discharge of this excess surface water in the winter, which is good for fish too. It's integrated holistic design. Volkswagen plant, three million gallon rainwater system on that one. Currently in Tokyo, every new building that's built in Tokyo has to capture, contain, and reuse 70% of all the water the building uses itself in its own building envelope. 